talk about going active for most customers, it means shortening the amount of time between when events happen in the real world and when data is loaded into the database. It can be trickle fed, it can be mini batched into the database. After the data arrives in the database, then you need to run analytics. Maybe the event is important, maybe it's not important. And then the third part is to take action. So if the event is important, something needs to happen. Maybe in the case of an active dashboard or a scoreboard, something changes from green to yellow or starts flashing red if it's really important. In the case of active customer management, it may be that there's an increase in the number of telephone calls coming into the contact center complaining about a new product introduction. That would be active noteworthy. Usually we mean intro debt. In the case of the supply chain, it could be uh, goods are not flowing, or maybe there's a stall because an upstream supplier didn't deliver a boxcar with a product, and so your manufacturing line is going to go down. So in all cases, getting information into the database, analyzed very quickly, and then taking action are the three parts of going active. And from a business perspective, what it really means is better, faster decisions for everybody in the company. Traditionally, Teradata has been used in the back office to help people spot trends more quickly, maybe close the books more quickly. But what we're really talking about from a business perspective is connecting the frontline people and the systems directly to Teradata. So it might be, in the case of people, a contact center where in the course of a conversation with an unhappy customer, up on the screen from Teradata pops their lifetime value. Maybe up pops the remedy, how many dollars off the bill they're going to get as a consequence. Um, in the case of systems, it might be a website. So, for example, if you're coming back into the web and you were on a travel website browsing city pairs and you looked but you didn't buy, Teradata would be connected to the website and able to help customize the website so the city pairs that you were looking at, if there's a deal by one of the affiliated airlines, that would be the, one of the things that you would see on a home screen. I'm the collector of the case study, so it's a fun job to have at Teradata. I get to interact with companies in all different industries and people in all different job functions, ranging from marketing to supply chain and logistics. Uh, we have about 150 case studies now. I'm, I'm very happy with that number. Um, and a lot of them are new ones, so every time I go to an event, we usually hear customers that are going active. In the springtime, for example, GE Rail, they uh, lease boxcars, and they have about 425,000 assets that they need to manage. Sometimes the boxcars have problems, so they have repair shops around the United States, and they have a considerable number of repair events that happen each year. The old way, before they used Teradata, was that a person seeing a boxcar would call the, the uh, care center for boxcars and find out where they should ship it for repair. Usually they would send it to the closest location. So if the problem is around Baltimore, maybe there's a repair shop in Richmond, Virginia, and it would go there. What they do now with Teradata is take 20 different factors into account. The capacity of the repair station, the skills of the people who work at the station, the inventory on the parts that they would need to fix it, plus the location where the boxcar is supposed to be next. If it's a specialty boxcar and it's supposed to be in California in one week, and there's a repair shop in Riverside, California, they may ship that boxcar off there to be repaired. So in the course of one year, they've saved more than $1 million by using that added level of intelligence in real time so that when the, the event occurs, you know, a boxcar that's going to have a problem, they know exactly where to send it. Another example in another industry would be telecom. In this case, it's a, a telecom company in the Middle East. It's a relatively small customer. I like that because in many cases, uh, a lot of the big Teradata customers have great stories, but smaller companies say, gee, can I go active too? And the answer is absolutely. This company has 1,800 employees, and I'm told that 900 of them are directly connected to Teradata to do their jobs in every group, marketing, sales, finance. In this case, in the contact center, the goal always is to do one and done. So when people call, do they get their problem fixed? They are not hold too long, and they don't get handed off. 
by using Teradata and having real-time information at the fingertips about the account, information about the lifetime value of the customer, they're able to improve first call resolutions by 50%. The other thing in the contact center that you focus on is asset utilization and throughput costs. So what that means is average handling time. And before they started using Teradata, they reported that it took about 240 seconds to handle one call. Now they're down to 90 seconds, and it's because they have all the information to handle the call on one screen. So they're doing it very efficiently. It's better for the customer. You get your call fixed on the first call with not a lot of wait time. It's also more efficient for the company. They can handle more calls per unit time. I'm getting the question of how hard it is to go active a lot from different accounts three times in the past month when I've been out visiting customers. The answers that I give range, but number one answer is get a metrics-oriented CEO. So if you're lucky enough to have someone that manages a company by the numbers and they have up-to-date scoreboard or dashboard information in front of them, they can then focus the attention of the entire organization on the key performance indicators. Most companies don't have that advantage. They don't have a Gary Loveman like at Harris, or they don't have a Patrick Byrne at Overstock. I was talking to one of the Overstock employees who told me, Patrick uses the dashboard to plan his daily calendar. If the company is having a problem with gross margin, he might be inviting pricing people into a committee meeting at 1 o'clock to get ready for the meeting. What do those people do? They run to the database and take a look so they have the same information at their fingertips, hopefully with a deeper level of insight to resolve the problem. Or if an issue is excessive product returns, you might invite a category manager in, and that person also would better be armed with the data. But not everybody has the luxury of a metrics-oriented CEO. A second approach, and I'm beginning to see more and more case studies here, would be a CFO organization that wants to move from being an accounting group to a performance consulting group. So that group can help with identifying and collecting the KPIs. In many cases, if a company has a strategy group that does cascaded scoreboards so that everybody in the company knows how their activities, their daily activities, roll up at the group level, division level, corporate level, then you have a really good chance of using data to ensure that all the individual activities add up to things that will make a difference to the bottom line. And increasingly, those KPI and the management of the KPIs is under the control of the CFO. What I find really interesting in those cases are the focus on the use of BI to detect leading indicators instead of lagging indicators. A lagging indicator might be something like number of customers that you have at the end of the quarter or total sales or revenue per employee. By the time you report those numbers, it's too late to do anything, to take action. So what the leading companies are doing are using BI to go upstream and find the predictive areas. For example, if you're doing a new product launch aimed at new customers and you're spending a lot of money on advertising, is it working or not? So if you've done spot buys on advertising and you know it's not working early in the quarter, you can pull the plug on that spend and redirect it and then take a look at the correlation. So the second answer would be an enlightened finance organization that doesn't want to be the accounting group anymore. They want to be a business consultant and help with the identification of leading indicators. Both those cases are great. If you can make them happen, the more usual case will be whichever group adopted the data warehouse first is typically the group going active. So it might be a marketing organization. And that group would then lead the way in terms of more active marketing activities. So doing things like personalizing the website, constructing faster cycle times for the models on who's going to churn and what are we going to do about them so that you have a really high energy organization that's able to use data to make day-to-day decisions and thereby go active. 